Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining our session on Denmark. Uh, so we will present you the green hydrogen ecosystem and opportunities in Denmark. My name is Catherine Ajej. I'm working for Invest in Denmark, based here in Paris at the Danish Embassy. Invest in Denmark is an entity part of the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And we are supporting uh, foreign companies uh, into their investment into the country. So in order to give you the full overview and most insightful overview of what's happening in Denmark at the moment, we've gathered a great lineup of speakers. First of all, we have the honor to have with us His Excellency uh, Mr. Christian, Christiansen, uh, Ambassador of Denmark to France. Then uh, I have my great colleague Kim Schutz, uh, part of our cleantech team, is our power to x expert, is based in Denmark. And then we have also the great pleasure to have with us Mathieu Guinée, CEO from LIFE. Um, thank you for your time. Mathieu, I know you are extremely busy, so thanks for joining. Uh, this conference. Um, so we will have three presentations and we start uh, now uh, to make sure we are finishing on time. So leave you the world, Michael. Merci, uh, Catherine, et bonjour à toutes et à tous. Uh, je suis ravi d'être parmi vous, uh, vous aujourd'hui uh, et de participer à nouveau à Evolution. Uh, je vais continuer uh, en anglais uh, afin de pouvoir m'adresser à ceux dans la salle qui ne sont pas euh, francophones. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, uh, for joining us uh, here today at this conference organized by Invest in Denmark uh, and the team from uh, the Danish embassy here in Paris. It's my third year at High Evolution, uh, so we are becoming uh, frequent uh, visitors, and it's good to see that it grows uh, every year. Uh, last year, we had four Danish companies uh, present here. This year, we have nine uh, companies. So with this kind of expansion, uh, we will have to find a bigger place uh, next year. Um, our delegation is uh, led by the Confederation of uh, Danish Industries uh, and our Trade Council team. So very th much uh, thank you both to the Danish companies who have uh, come here and for the organizations who have helped prepare it. Uh, power to x is a strategic sector in Denmark. Uh, we have a national strategy that dates back to December 2021. Uh, we may have to renew it, uh, uh, given how fast uh, uh, this uh, sector uh, moves. Uh, it's part of the Danish ambition to reduce CO2 emissions by 70%, 70% by 2030. Um, and uh, the hydrogen and power to x uh, plays an important role in securing a stable and climate-friendly energy supply. Uh, the last three years, we have put a high focus on this sector, and we have more than 40 projects and uh, 10 gigawatt already announced. And considering we are a small country, I think we are doing uh, pretty well. Uh, Kim, uh, my colleague from Invest in Denmark, will present why Denmark is a very attractive destination for future PTX uh, projects. Um, some other initiatives are also supporting our 2030 ambition uh, in terms of uh, reduction in CO2 emissions. We are currently working on the world's first energy islands. Uh, one will be in the North Sea, uh, and that will be able to power 10 million European households with clean energy from the surrounding wind farms. Now in Denmark we are about 2 million households, so uh, it's not for self-consumption, it is indeed for uh, European uh, consumption. A second hub near the island of Bornholm in the Baltic Sea will have a capacity of 3 uh, gigawatt. We are looking into a 10 to, 12, 10 to 20 year time frame, but these projects will soon be real. Um, we expand on wind and, and solar, and that will be uh, our basis uh, for a huge supply of 
uh, green energy, which can be used for uh, the growing electricity demand, but it's also an important uh, part of decarbonizing the rest of the energy sector, uh, for example, in the production of uh, hydrogen through electrolysis. Uh, at European level, uh, many discussions are taking place at the moment when we talk energy due to the geopolitical uh, challenges we are facing. And it's also a matter of accelerating our uh, green transition. And I believe uh, even today the European Commission has presented new goals and strategies uh, in terms of how to accelerate uh, this area. Um, also, uh, when we talk uh, regional cooperation in Europe, we had a summit um, last year and a declaration we call the Espia uh, Declaration. Espia is a city on the west coast of Denmark which really has become the energy hub uh, for both uh, the old energy sources but certainly also the new. And a declaration was signed between Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany and the European Commission um, the intention uh, in the region is to produce uh, or have a capacity of offshore wind for at least 65 gigawatts by 2030. Uh, so the North Sea region will become a green power plant or hub of Europe. Uh, partnerships is another way uh, where we need to, um, to expand in order to, to grow uh, uh, and accelerate the green transition. Um, you will soon be hearing from Mathieu, our great friend from the French company Life, uh, which uh, has uh, created partnerships with Danish companies and are involved in the Green Lab uh, Skive in the western part of Denmark, uh, where we try to have a forceful center uh, for uh, innovation in hydrogen uh, production and in other uh, sources. So thank you very much, Mathieu, for being such a great advocate. You will hear later, and I hope <laughs> he will come up with a great advocacy for what we do in Denmark, but I'm sure he will. Um, I hope you will have good discussions uh, uh, during High Evolution, uh, and uh, I hope it will lead to more fruitful cooperation between Danish and French uh, companies and other partners. Uh, so that we can do even more and bigger projects in uh, the future. We have, we have a stand right when you enter the hall, you will see Denmark very clearly uh, marked, so, so it's hard to miss, so please go by the Danish stand. And there are also Danish companies uh, around uh, which will be happy to uh, discuss with you. So thank you very much, and I'll give the floor to Kim. Hello, everybody. My name is Kim Schulz. I'm a special advisor at uh, Invest in Denmark and based in Denmark and uh, assisting uh, foreign companies who wish to do uh, power tracks projects in Denmark. So um, why is power tracks so quite interesting in Denmark? Um, we do have a lot of uh, green power access in Denmark, uh, mainly from uh, wind power. And now uh, we are developing a lot of offshore wind power in Denmark, uh, which could provide three times more electricity than we need ourselves in Denmark. So there will be a lot of power for uh, green hydrogen production in Denmark over the coming years. And uh, the government has set a goal that uh, we should have 12.9 uh, gigawatt of offshore wind capacity by 2030 and we should uh, quadruple our land-based wind and solar capacity also by 2030. So there will be a lot of power available. And uh, it has been calculated by our Danish TSO and the German uh, TSO, Gasuni, that uh, potentially Denmark could provide up to 25% of the green hydrogen that Germany needs in future to replace coal and gas and fossil fuels. And uh, we do have uh, salt caverns in Denmark that will be used for storage of uh, green hydrogen. 
And um, then we can use the waste heat from the electrolyzers producing the green hydrogen for our district heating systems in Denmark. Which, and you can sell the waste heat and uh, earn some money on that and improve your business case based on that. <clears throat> so here are some uh, green facts about Denmark, but the important thing is that uh, we are probably going to have 100% green electricity in the grid by 27, and uh, we want to uh, reduce our carbon emissions by 70% by 2030, and we want to be totally carbon emission free by 2045. And uh, we, have had a l we have a lot of cooperation with other countries in terms of green power development in Denmark. So here are some pictures of, our, of uh, the uh, prime ministers on the first photo from uh, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, and Belgium, and Denmark uh, agreeing on the expansion of uh, wind power, offshore wind power in the North Sea. And the second photo is uh, the, uh, all the Baltic states uh, so an agreement made about uh, establishing a lot of uh, offshore wind power in the Baltic Sea as well. <clears throat> we uh, have some quite competitive power prices in Denmark. Uh, this one is showing the prices uh, first half of uh, uh, 22, and that was at the time when the prices were increasing quite a lot due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine and uh, the increasing gas prices. But we do expect the prices to lower again in Denmark based on all the uh, offshore wind and land-based uh, wind power and solar capacity that we are going to have in Denmark. And on top of that, uh, the uh, power to X facilities can connect directly to solar farms and wind farms and get very cheap power from those. And uh, the tariffs for, from uh, the power grid will also be reduced in those areas where you have easy access to power and uh, high consumers, uh, 100 megawatt hour, uh, they will have lower prices as well. And uh, those who uh, can accept to be disconnected from the grid in case of failures can also get a 25% reduction in future. So it will be quite competitive in terms of power prices. Uh, we have uh, a power to strategy in Denmark, <coughs> and uh, the important parts of that strategy is that uh, we are going to establish hydrogen pipelines uh, connecting us with Germany, so it will be easy to export uh, green uh, hydrogen to Germany. And um, then uh, there will also be some support for uh, uh, biogenic CO2 capture, so that you can uh, produce e-fuels in Denmark for uh, for, uh, for the maritime sector and the aviation sector mainly. And then, uh, yes, as I mentioned, there will be lower power tari tariffs. That's also part of the strategy. And uh, then uh, also the possibility to connect directly to solar farms and wind farms to have very low power prices. And this is a map of uh, how the Danish uh, future uh, hydrogen uh, pipeline transmission pipeline infrastructure is going to look. Uh, so you will see that uh, we will be able to collect the hydrogen at the Danish west coast, close to the North Sea, and send it down to Germany and also distribute it in, uh, in Denmark. And uh, right now the, the government and the energy agency is doing the planning of the hy hydrogen pipeline infrastructure, and we expect to, to have uh, the plans uh, released uh, during this spring here, and then we can start construction of the pipelines. <coughs> and uh, as mentioned so far, uh, more than 40 projects have been announced in Denmark with uh, more than 10 gigawatt of uh, electrolyzer capacity, and uh, there are more projects in the pipeline, so uh, it will be quite fascinating how much uh, power to X capacity there will be in Denmark in future. Uh, this is just one case where Invest in Denmark has uh, assisted quite a lot. It's uh, H2 Energy from Switzerland, who are now uh, uh, have bought a site in at the Danish west coast in Esbjerg and are going to build a one gigawatt facility there to provide uh, green hydrogen for uh, the transport sector in Denmark and to export uh, green hydrogen to Germany. 
Um, and then uh, we have also uh, assisted uh, live, who will tell us about their experience in a few minutes. And um, there are some funding opportunities in Denmark, mainly for uh, development of new technologies, but we will also uh, next month have an announcement of uh, a tendering process for green hydrogen production in Denmark. This is just to illustrate a lot of companies are active in Denmark, Danish companies, foreign companies working with uh, power to x development and uh, most of the international companies we have assisted at Invest in Denmark. So our job is to assist foreign companies who wish to do uh, projects in Denmark and uh, it's uh, here in France it's uh, Catherine who is uh, the lead in terms of that and uh, in Denmark it's, uh, it's me and a colleague called Maria who are supporting uh, the companies. Yeah, so um, that was a short presentation and uh, please do come to our stand to uh, ask uh, questions about how we can assist you. Thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot, my friends, to invite me on a regular basis here. I'm delighted to be uh, with you. Uh, I'll tell you how much they can assist you. Well, uh, I'll tell you a bit about uh, life and uh, what we're doing and what we're doing in, uh, in Denmark and what we intend uh, to do. But first, you have to know what we are uh, doing. And life is an hydrogen producer. And why do we want to produce so much hydrogen in Europe and in Denmark? This is because it's urgent to produce hydrogen. And I'm really, really happy that this 70% 70 70 reduction of CO2 by 2030 was stated by the Danish government. It's really important to be more ambitious than the path uh, we are on. Because we don't have much time, we just have seven years to do this much production. And this is not for you, this is not for me, this is for our kids and the kids of our kids. Because if we reduce CO2 now, it will have an impact only in half a century or a century. So you're not acting for yourselves, you're acting for your kids. We are acting for uh, your kids and you're acting for my daughter, Sidonie, five, and my little guy, two, is two, Felix. And the good news for them is that uh, they can have a bright future if we act. And we can act, and we did a lot of things already. Women and men are geniuses. We already came up with biogas, with smart grids, with batteries, with renewables. A lot of wind power you have already, and it's doable to do that in a swift manner. But we need to act now. So what I'm going to show you is about today, not tomorrow. It's about photos, not drawing. It's about photos, not drawing. Act now. So th this is really important. And what we do is that we produce hydrogen to de decarbonize mobility. But you have to be aware that decarbonizing industry is as important as mobility. Because if you look at the CO2 emissions, you look at the direct use of energy, you have 23% of the CO2 emissions that are linked to industry and 23% that are linked to mobility. So both are really important. Cement, steel, chemical industry, this is really important to decarbonize those, uh, those industry. And hydrogen can do a lot for transportation, but also for the chemical industry and the steel industry. It can not do anything for cement, but for two thirds of the CO2 emissions of industry, you can abate a lot. So then you need to produce green hydrogen, and this is the only side that is at industrial scale that is connected directly to wind turbines. You see there's a bike trail here. This is an hydrogen plant, and we have a cable that is getting the wind power. This is in the west of France. that is getting the wind power to produce green hydrogen from green power directly, not from the grid, and from seawater that we designalize, purify, and do the electrolysis, so split the molecule of water, this liquid, into two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. And then we saw that in those trailers that we track to the customers. 
like Lidl, for example, there's a big logistics center that is running 24-7 uh, on hydrogen, just on our hydrogen. It's Lidl, it's our discount. They are not the one that purchased the most fancy and more expensive, most expensive stuff. So it, it means that we can do green hydrogen now, not tomorrow. It's an energy of today, not tomorrow, at competitive price because the supermarkets are buying that for their logistics centers. They are cheap. So it needs to be cheap, and we are making money out of it. It can run 24-7, green, competitive price. This is what we demonstrate now. And now we need to duplicate that in all the countries that bet a while ago on green power. So this is not mainly in France. This is more in Denmark than in France. And when you want to go to Denmark, what do you do? You call Katrina, you call invest in Denmark because this is the best way to go in, uh, in, in Denmark. Because if you're French and you want to invest in Denmark, then there's, it's uh, almost the same than France. Almost. It's Europe. There's European regulation, but uh, it's almost in not the same culture, not the same money, not the same, exactly the same regulation. So you, have, you need to have someone that translates for you the specifics of Denmark for a French company. And here is a site where you, you see that Denmark uh, understood everything. There's wind turbines, biogas, and here is the land plot where we are going to install 100 megawatt of electrolyzers. Based on what we've developed in France, we are going to duplicate that in Denmark. So this is just about scaling up, about doing stuff now. And you need to find the right location, you need to find the energy. It can be uh, well supported by the, 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 the great team of uh, the Danish government, but it's, it's doable. And then <coughs> if you think about what you can do with uh, biogas, mad grid, uh, hydrogen, and you want to replace a good chunk of the oil and the gas you're using today. So biogas can replace a good chunk of natural gas Okay, but you still consume a lot of oil for the trucks. You still consume a lot of uh, energy for industry. And so you need to be able to produce enough hydrogen to replace the fossil energy that is needed for stuff that you cannot decarbonize directly with electricity, directly with biogas. So there's a good chunk of stuff that you still need to decarbonize with hydrogen. And that's almost 30% of our CO2 emissions, so that's a lot. Just for you to know, aviation, the flights, it's only 2% of our CO2 emissions, so that's a lot, 30%. And then you need to produce huge quantities of uh, hydrogen. And if you want to produce this much energy, you need to have the resources that are matching the needs. And when you look at offshore wind, if you compare the potential that you could can produce with offshore turbines to what we currently consume in terms of electricity. The potential is 11 times our current electricity consumption in Europe. The potential that you technically can address with offshore wind turbine is 11 times our current electricity production. So there you have the good leverage to produce enough hydrogen to replace oil and gas because you need to replace so much energy that you need to have a really big resource. And you need to help your neighbors. So like you stated, the global warming is not going to stop at the border of France or Denmark. So you need to help Germany in decarbonizing their industry. So you need to produce enough electricity, enough hydrogen, and share it so in the end you'll have addressed our global warming problems, and you'll be sharing stuff so you'll be smarter than what you, you used to be. And you need to produce then offshore. And this is really big for us, uh, this development, because this is one of the only leverage we can have to produce so much hydrogen. And the photos that I'm going to show here, is like what we did in west of France and we, we want to duplicate in, uh, in Denmark. This is in west of France. Again, I'm from Nantes, west of France. So stuff we start in west of France. At some point we start in Copenhagen. <laughs> but this is an offshore platform with the same capacity that I've shown you before, but we did a technical jump. So it fits in a platform that is 
20 meters in width and 12 meters in depth. So now it fits on that, fully autonomous, and it's going to be, it's working, you can visit that, it's going to be sent at sea in March, when the sea will be less rough than today. Don't go at sea now, it's 10 meters in, uh, in height, the wave, so uh, if you want to, uh, <laughs> to be in, a, in good shape, don't go at sea now, but we will go at sea and put that platform to this existing floating wind turbine in March, prove that it's possible to do so. And then we can duplicate that in Denmark at scale, but you need to do stuff now. So the really good news is that we can do it. There's plenty of people that wants to do it. Denmark wants to do it. They have really aggressive targets to reduce, and they have the good uh, strategy. So if we act now, then I'm pretty sure in 2030 we will see La Vie en Rose. Thanks, everybody. Let's meet at the Danish stand. <laughs>